It's starting to look more and more like Michael Rubin and Fanatics will be relying on influencer marketing to really broadening out Fanatics sports cards and Fanatics collectibles as a whole. We're going to dig dive into this. Stick around. Hey guys, another day, another sports card video. Welcome back. I was browsing the Instagram, the IG earlier, and I saw Michael Rubin actually opening packs. I believe he did a live stream where he was opening packs of Series 1 Tops Baseball, looking for his guy, he said, Julio Rodriguez, which I thought was kind of cool. I mean, look, this is the CEO. This is the guy that runs Fanatics, the guy that runs the big company that is now going to be taking over really all of sports cards, or at least a big, big chunk most of the chunks of sports cards. It was recently on the Full Send podcast. I watched it about an hour and 10 minutes long. The first hour roughly is mostly about his origins and kind of some of his strategies and things like that, which I had really heard all of those things before. But if you go to about the hour mark, that's when he starts talking about the collectibles part of the Fanatics business and a couple of interesting nuggets that he does mention when he's talking about influencers in general. He said you don't want to be on the wrong side of a lot of these influencers. You don't want them going against you necessarily when they've got such a huge voice with social media. You look at the Kim Kardashians of the world, really the Kardashians in general, the Jenner's Kardashians, how many you know makeup products and different types of beauty products are they selling just with a tweet, just with an IG post or a live or whatever. They get paid tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I think, per tweet. It's wild just based on the amount of reach that they do have. And Michael Rubin, it looks as if he is going to rely heavily on influencer marketing, which is different when you think about compared to traditional marketing, whether it be radio or TV or print ads or things like that. Really over the last, what, five, six, seven years, we've seen kind of this rise of influencer marketing and social media has really allowed this to happen. The every man can essentially build a, a voice, build a channel, anybody can do it. There's not too many businessmen that are more well-connected in the culture world than Michael Rubin. This guy throws massive Super Bowl parties, white parties, where he's got every single celebrity, influencer, musician, entertainer on the planet. He knows them. He is tied in with them. He's really kind of the king of cool in a sense. I mean, really all the people that influence all of us consumers out there, not all of us, of course, I'm not necessarily buying my beauty products because Kim Kardashian <laughs> recommends it, but <laughs> man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> you get my point. I mean, they're really controlling a lot of kind of the consumers out there that look up to these folks. In this interview, he talks about how this business has never been marketed. Well, maybe he forgot about this. And we may I only have, right. I believe that we may only have 32 of these, but let me explain something. Or maybe a little bit of that. Working overtime on the premiere of Fleer Ultra NBA basketball cards with tons of white hot action. Marbleized borders. Wow! A predict football cards! <laughs> One of my viewers did also point out that he has seen Topps commercials for Topps cards on the MLB network. About how long does that take? And we're done. Ooh, hot. Now we have some fresh, delicious packs of Top Series 1. They smell amazing. There is TV commercials out there. And Rediscover Tops. But there's already more marketing, effectively, than what we have seen, I guess, in the recent past. But a lot of times when we hear people talk about fanatics coming in, I think that maybe there's an expectation of they come in, they take over, you know, they put a lot of money into it, it becomes cool, and all of our card prices go way up. All everyone's collections shoot up in value. And I don't really see it quite like that. I think this is going to be a slow burn. I think it's going to be a drip, drip, drip that more and more of these people doing it. I think it's going to take, frankly, I think it's going to take a long time. I don't think that just because Ken Golden is on with Drake and they're opening up Fleer basketball that all of a sudden Everybody thinks that it's cool to open cards and, and mess with cards. You know, I don't think that that's what it's going to be. But I think if you have kind of a residual effect of more and more of these folks doing it and it becoming more and more of a part of society,
society. It's kind of a cool thing to do. It's more in the norm again, because really the last time this was in the norm was you go back to the 90s when really it was you were a weirdo in school if you didn't collect cards. I mean, really every kid in school was buying packs of baseball cards and football cards into the into the 90s. So, you know, it did become a lot more mainstream, more mainstream than it is now. But I think that it can become more and more mainstream and maybe not even necessarily to sports cards, but you already see it with Pokemon cards. I mean, that's really the big one. A lot of the young people, they are into Pokemon cards, my youngest included, you know, so just cards in general, trading cards, and maybe that does expand out into other culture cards. Another actually interesting tidbit, I got a message from another viewer that said that, you know, kind of heard through the grapevine, there's some rumblings that maybe Zero Cool, that brand is on the way out as a whole, and maybe it just rolls up under tops. And maybe that's part of some of the delay when we think about the Stranger Things cards. And I think there's also Dune and Clerks that are still kind of wait. We're still waiting on this stuff. And so I think that that's an interesting thing. Are they just moving completely away from that zero cool branding for culture cards? And it just all falls under tops. Very interested to kind of see how that goes because I'm really pulling for culture cards. You guys know that I like the Stranger Things cards. It's a huge nostalgia thing. Me and my family are into it. It's fun. And I hope that they broaden that part out. I think if there is a hit TV show, I think it would be awesome to have more of kind of the, the on-card autos and the memorabilia stuff to, to add in as kind of a value add into everybody's collection. You know, we've got our athletes. We've got our sports stuff. We've got our sports cards. It would be awesome to have more of kind of the actors and the different things that are going on in the world. Other people in the world. And so I thought this was interesting. Michael Rubin opening up packs and will we see a barrage of this? Will people support him? I think that's a big thing too is he's really got to get you know high net worth folks behind this thing. It's really got to be a combination of the athletes, the entertainers. If trading cards become a thing in society you know before iPhones, it's kind of when you think about like now, iPhones are just cool in society. It's just a part of society. It's entrenched in, in everything that we do. Apple iPhones are everywhere. Nobody they knew that they needed an Apple iPhone until it was here, you know, until it existed. So it'll be very interesting to see if he's able to pull this off because influencer marketing, I think, can work for certain products, certain types of things. With trading cards, though, we haven't really had a barrage of this at, on this magnitude because really Michael Rubin has the ability if he can really kind of get his soldiers working, kind of these influencer folks really working for him, you know, what sort of effect will that have? I think this is going to be an amazing case study. And again, I I don't think it's that like all, you know, our cards go to the moon. I don't think that's necessarily what it is. It's just kind of a slow drip, but does it just become more of a mainstream thing with staying power? Not something where it's very popular for a period of time, then it kind of fades out until the next, you know, 20, 25 years when the nostalgia hits and then you have the next generation. That stuff's going to be so interesting to watch. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Influencer marketing and fanatics, what will come of it? Oh, and before I let you go, don't forget this. Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.